in Virginia. So like um, the 757, also known as, um, and I'm also the representative for South Carolina. So even though I may not be your direct point of contact, please feel free to use me as a resource um, uh, within, my uh, within my presentation, because I will be presenting some slides. I won't be able to see the chat. So just feel free to just drop questions as I present. Once I finish the presentation, I'll look at the chat and start from and work and work my way down the chat um, to answer those questions. So, like I said, just feel free to drop those in the chat. Um, all right, so I will go ahead and get started um, with this presentation. So, uh, Virginia Tech was founded in 1872. We are a land granted public institution, and that's a mouthful, right? Uh, let's break it down a little bit. Being a land grant institution pretty much means that the government gave us this piece of land and told us build an institution that would create the leader for tomorrow. And that's exactly what we've done ever since um, um, our start here at Virginia Tech. Oh, I think. Yeah, that. Naomi, you shared your screen. That, okay, great. great. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, so yeah, so uh, it was, uh, the purpose of the land grant institution is pretty much to build these leaders um, at a young age and give them all the resources, um, as much exposure at while at, while at Virginia Tech to get those hands-on experiences. Uh, being a research institution, we pride ourselves in this. We are an R1 research institute. All that really means that we get lots and lots of funding to make a research a reality for our students. Um, the best thing that I think for our research opportunities on campus is that they're not, um, we don't like gatekeep them for upperclassmen or only seniors. Day one of classes as a first year student, um, you can and probably will be presented with research opportunity. And it overall enhances your overall learning experience um, as the extra level of dimension to your learning um, at Virginia Tech. Um, for those who don't know where we're physically located, we are in Blacksburg, Virginia. Um, we are known as probably being welcoming, connected, one of the most active places to live. Why? It's because we're surrounded by tons of recreational opportunities on the outskirts of campus. To name a few, like tubing, canoeing, hiking, white water rafting, cave exploring, all these are activities our students partake on, um, usually as a way to de-stress from their classes or kind of a study break. Um, we're a pretty large institution. We have about 37,000 students, 30,000 being undergraduates, meaning they're pursuing a bachelor's degree, traditionally completed within four to five years, and then about 7,000 graduate students, meaning they're pursuing a master's, doctoral, postgraduate degree. Um, so overall, 37,000 students can sound a little bit intimidating and overwhelming, but we actually have a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So, um, you, and the average class size is between 25 to 30. So hopefully it's not too different what you're already used to. So although we're a large institution, you also get the small school vibes to it. So I always say you get the best of both worlds here at Virginia Tech. We are a D1 school when it comes to athletics, um, football being one of the biggest things that we're known for, basketball also making good segue um, in, our, in the most recent seasons. Um, and even if you aren't a football fanatic or athletic fanatic, definitely encourage coming out and going out to games. You see how we come together as a community, and um, it also shows the support that the surrounding areas have for Virginia Tech which I personally think is always a great thing to note, to have that good relationship with the community, right? So um, the, everyone's a Hokie fan, everyone comes out to football games, and every time we have a home game, we're known for causing a mini earthquake here in Blacksburg because of all the jumping in the stands. So tons and tons of school spirit, um, definitely an experience that hopefully you all get to live one day. However, one of the biggest things that sets us aside from a lot of institutions is our commitment to service. At Virginia Tech, our motto is ut prosum, which is Latin for that I may serve. Everything we do, we do it in service here at Virginia Tech. One of the biggest ways that we get back in terms of service is through our Corps Cadet program. We are one of six senior military academies in the entire nation and one of two that actually have this type of program. So this isn't your average college level ROTC camp or program. Um, this is well known, ranked and recognized. You do have two different paths that you can take when you, uh, if you do join, decide to join the Corps, you have the civilian leadership track or the ROTC track, which we offer every branch except the Coast Guard. The biggest distinction between these two is that the ROTC track does have a commitment to enlist in the military after you graduate, whereas the civilian leadership track, same structure, same rigor, same um, level of discipline that you're looking for, but without that obligation after you graduate. Do know that there is flexibility. So let's say you come in you know, as, as Army, then the summer of going into your junior year, you do an internship, your senior year, now being offered a full-time job with that internship and can no longer commit um, and enroll, um, enlist in the military, you can switch over to the civilian leadership track um, and not have that obligation after you graduate. 
It's a pretty straightforward way to get involved with the cadets um, is because it's just one question on the application. Are you interested in the Corps of Cadets? If you answer yes to that question and you receive an offer of admission, um, you're automatically part of the cadet program. And um, do note though, that if you say yes, you are telling us that you will be serving and enlisting in the, in the Corps of Cadets. So um, if at any time that decision changes prior to your start at Virginia Tech, please note that your application will be re-reviewed and reconsidered, um, um, taking away that extra consideration. Because um, we are one of two in all these special rankings with the, with the program, this is something we're trying to maintain and actively recruit. So these applications do get a little bit of extra consideration in the review process, hence why if you do decide to drop that consideration prior to your start, your application will have to get re-reviewed without that extra consideration. Um, if you decide to come to Virginia Tech, you'll be joining Hokie Nation. Um, here at Virginia Tech, uh, uh, one of the, we have a saying that says that we just, uh, uh, no Hokie left behind or Hokies help Hokies. And we have tons of alumni and, and the best of testament to that. Our alumni are employed by some of the prestigious organizations in the entire country. To name a few, the CIA, Disney, Tesla, NASA, JP Morgan and Chase, Dominion, Altria. We're across our different fields, disciplines all around the country um, and truly all around the globe. Our Smith's Career Center does a phenomenal job of connecting our undergraduate students to our alumni. They host a yearly job slash internship fair for all our students and for all uh, level, grade levels. So regardless of where you are academically, there will be somebody at that annual fair that is part of the field that you're trying to get into after you graduate. Um, and then uh, tons of other resources that come as being part of, a, of being a Hokie. Um, Handshake is also a great platform for you to look for internships and jobs. And the best thing is that you get access, you still have access to all these resources two years after you graduate. So not only are we making sure that you're being taken care of while you're on campus, that investment in you is also there after you leave and making sure that you're um, starting off, right, your, your, your uh, professional journey on the right foot. So do know that two years after you graduate, you have access to, to um, uh, um, uh, practice interviews, mock interviews, um, looking at your resumes, doing all those edits, attending these fairs. So lots of opportunities to get hands-on experiences. Um, on average, our student, about 92% of our students are graduated with hands-on experience in their actual major before they walk that stage at graduation. Um, another way that we have a global presence is through our study abroad program. We do have study abroad. Um, we have some that happen fall, spring, summer, year long, and there's some as short as one to two weeks. So you can really go what bit works best for you in your time frame. Do note though that some, um, some trips are gonna be major or college specific. Others are gonna be open to all students. So you can kind of get those general education courses knocked out um, by studying abroad. Uh, we go to all um, continents, we, have, we go to all the continents, including Antarctica, but the most popular destination is actually Switzerland because we actually have a campus out in Switzerland. So tons of opportunities to go out that way, go um, and study abroad. Now let's talk about why we're really here, right? How do you apply to Virginia Tech? What, do the, what are the tips, tricks? What do I need to know? So we are exclusively on the Common App. Um, uh, if you go to vt.edu forward slash apply, you can, it'll give you a basic rundown of what it means to be um, an early action applicant, what it means to be um, um, a regular decision of fresh year versus transfer, international versus domestic. So it'll break it down and it'll kind of give you what we're, uh, what we're looking for in terms of being eligible to apply to Virginia Tech. Um, but please note though, we ask that you refer, um, refrain from using a school or work email. Those are sometimes uh, filtered to block outside senders. So it happens every year. Uh, you submit your application, you think you're good to go. Uh, uh, one of our readers go in, look at that application see that something is missing. And we're gonna email you constantly. And if every email bounces back and we never get that information that's missing, your application runs the risk of being canceled. So um, it is very important that you are using an email that you know for fact for a fact that you can get outside, you receive outside emails from, um, and another one that you're checking regularly just in case we do reach out to you. If there is anything that I want you all to walk away from this presentation, it's this, major matters at Virginia Tech. We are a major driven institution. The major you select on the application will ultimately determine how competitive the review process is, what are we gonna be actively looking for, and what types of classes and involvements we're gonna be expecting from the applicant. We have, over 100 and we have over 120 different majors for our students to choose from, all housed within our colleges. 
So the bullet point all the way from science up are all our colleges. And of course, a major is housed within a college. On your application, <clears throat> you will be applying directly to the major. Um, there are no second, there are no third options when you're filling out the application, at least for Virginia Tech. So we really wanna make sure that you're comfortable and confident in the major you're selecting on the application because once your application deadline has passed, you cannot make any changes to your application. So let's say I submitted it today, September 6th, and I'm applying for early action, November 15th. I have from today up until November 15th to make any changes to my application, whether that be changing the major selection. Let's say I applied without any test scores. I took the SAT. I loved my scores. Now I want to submit them. As long as it's before November 15th, we can make that change happen for you. Once that deadline has passed for your respective application type, um, like I said, you're locked into that major up until the first semester of your freshman year. So we don't honor any major changes um, traditionally before you even start your classes. So like I said, make sure you do your research in terms of the majors that we offer on our campus. Um, I would go through all the bullets, but you know, concerning the, the nature of the audience, I'll focus primarily on engineering. If anyone is interested in learning about the other colleges, feel free to drop it in the chat or we can connect afterwards. But of course, engineering, probably what we're best known for. Um, we're nationally and internationally ranked and recognized. We have the tallest drone park on a college campus in the entire country, awarding professors, facilities. So this truly is, if you're considering engineering, this is definitely a school that you need to have on your list. Um, there are a couple of different majors that you can go to in engineering, but this is the only college or I guess department that we don't directly admit you into the major that, that you, that, um, uh, the specific um, engineering major you're looking to get into. So on the application, right, you will select uh, computer science or aerospace or ocean engineering. But when you receive your offer of admission, it'll say, congratulations, you're a general engineering student. Um, what that means is all our engineers come in their first year and they're all classified as general engineers, completing the prerequisite courses. As long as you have all your ducks in a row and you have everything, um, you've taken the right classes, you met with your advisors, um, you know, you got the grades that were needed, you'll begin, let's say your aerospace, your computer science degree, your second year on campus. So your first year is prerequisite year, uh, three years of the actual degree itself. So four years total graduating with um, a bachelor's within engineering. And it's also sometimes traditional that some students may do up to five years to complete the degree. So four to five years is what, you're, what, you, what you should be anticipating. Um, I want to do point out that we do have university studies. This is um, undecided or undeclared at other institutions. You may have heard a rumor or a myth that, you know, go apply undecided. That's the easy way into Virginia Tech. I am telling you here right now, that is not the case. That may be the case for some other schools, but not for Virginia Tech. It is highly competitive. As an admissions office, we only suggest university studies for students that are truly, absolutely cannot decide what major they want to do or cannot narrow it down to a college of their choice. Um, for anyone that may be in that predicament of, of still deciding what major to do, please note that every college has an undecided major within, the, within themselves. So there's a general engineering, right? That's an exploratory track. We have, you know, undecided business, science. So it's better to come in undecided through a college as opposed to university studies. So if you're able to narrow it down to a college of your choice, statistically, you're putting yourself in a better position to receive an offer from Virginia Tech. And then lastly on this slide, we do have two grad professional schools. We have the Virginia Tech Curriculum School of Medicine and the Virginia Maryland College of Vet Med. There aren't any guaranteed accepts, accelerated pathways for to, to either of these two programs, um, but there are a couple of benefits of being a VT student, such as there's some mentorship opportunities, shadowing opportunities, um, and anyone interested in, vet in veterinary school, the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences has a major known as Dairy Science, where if you are in good academic studying your senior year, um, you, have, you, you have a guaranteed interview with our vet school, which is a pretty good upper hand um, to even just get that interview alone. So when it comes down to reviewing your actual applications, we practice what's known as a holistic review. And I know this word gets thrown a lot, right? We're holistic, they're holistic. Everybody's holistic in a sense, but I really do think that Virginia Tech does a phenomenal job of living up at least what the expectation is to, of what it means to be holistic. And it's broken down into two different components, the academics and the personal. When it comes to the academic side of the review process, we're pretty unique in terms of what we do and don't require. We don't take letters of recommendation. We don't ask for our, um, we don't do interviews. 
We don't um, ask for official, and we don't ask for official transcripts at the time that you apply, as long as your entire high school career was completed domestically within the United States. If at any point throughout your high school career only, you studied internationally or outside of the United States and you received high school credit, you will not be completing the self-reported academic record. You will, be, you will need to submit an official transcript from your schools. But if you've completed your entire career um, domestically within the United States, you're gonna complete what's known as a self-reported academic record or SRAR for short. Um, pretty much you're going to list the classes by year, by semester, um, uh, the grade, uh, the credits, the, the level of rigor, um, and then when you took the class. So everything is self-reported, including test scores. And when I've mentioned test scores, and at, le at least for the review process, I'm only referring to the SAT and the ACT. You can list AP and IB test scores if you have them, but please note that they do not get taken into consideration, at least in the admissions review process. We will be looking at the class grade and the actual class itself, not the AP or IB test scores. Those come into play after you've been accepted and working with the registrar's office to get those credits transferred. In the admissions, we only look at the SAT and, um, SAT and ACT. When it comes to rigor, so you ask ourselves, what are we looking for? What should, what should I have? There's three main components in the academic review uh, side of the review process. We have the level of rigor of your courses, the grades received in those courses, and test scores shall you decide to provide them. So with rigor at the very top, equally seen as the most competitive courses a student can take, AP, IB, dual enrollment, equally seen. So if you call my office and say, I can't decide between AP calculus or dual enrollment calculus. <clears throat> in our eyes, we're looking at them at the same. So we'll ask you, they're the same in our eyes, if, what, what works best for your schedule. So after AP, IB, dual enrollment, you have honors and then standard. Um, when it comes to grades, strong grades, A's and B's across the board, and I know that's a very vague answer, but remember, we have over 120 different majors, some having more flexibility than others, just A's and B's is a nice blanketed statement that, that uh, encompasses um, being a competitive candidate for Virginia Tech. And then lastly, test scores. We are test optional up until those students entering the class of the fall of 2025. So um, please note that doesn't mean that test scores will be required afterwards. We don't even know ourselves, our board of visitors, as we approach that fall semester or that, um, that, that application cycle, uh, we'll, they'll have to re-vote and see whether or not we expand our test optional policy. I always get asked, is being test optional negative? Um, am I put at a disadvantage from anyone else? Um, am I being excluded for certain considerations for admissions or for scholarships? The answer is no. You are not penalized in any way by going test optional. I believe last year, our applications, I think 49% of our applications were test optional and 51% actually did submit test scores. Now, uh, you, uh, for the SAT, we do super score. Um, and then um, for the SAT, the average range that, you should, that we're looking for, um, 1180 to 1350 is what you should be aiming for. That was the last average of our last incoming class. But please note though, there is no major at Virginia Tech that requires a test score or a minimum test score. Um, but to be competitive, know that, and this is where being a holistic review comes into play and also where a major driven comes into play. Um, based on the major you select on the application is going to determine where we put our emphasis. So out of your four core classes of math, science, English, and history, which classes align the most with your intended major? So of course, I'm going I'm to pick on engineering. So for engineering, we're going to be focusing on math and science courses. Ideally, by, to be if you want to see how competitive you are, you want to be taking or as close to that highest level of math or science available to you at your school. How we practice being holistic is that we know we can't put all our students in the same playing field, right? Even if you're from the same district, from the same county, from the same state, different schools have different academies things, and, and magnet schools associated with them. So we have one review committee review all the applications from the same high school. So this one helps keep decisions consistent because it's the same eyes looking at all the applications from that same school. And we're gonna be evaluating within what's available to you at your specific school. So 
for engineering, like I said, you want to have that high level of math and science at the AP, IB, dual enrollment level. Usually calculus, we're looking for chemistry, physics. Um, having all this background just makes you that more of a competitive candidate for engineering specifically at Virginia Tech. To kind of give you a timeline of, of how to access the self-report academic record, you submit your application. Common App will give you a confirmation email. Hey, congrats, you applied to Virginia Tech. Two, three days after that email, my office will is an automated email. You'll get it that invites you to your applicant portal. Your applicant portal gives you access to three big things um, in there. One, your self, it gives you access to complete the self-reported academic record. And like I mentioned, this portal invite usually comes out within 72 hours of submitting the application. Then you also are able to apply to scholarships on your portal to Scholarship Central. And of course, when the, when the time comes, you'll be able to view your admission decision through your portal. So of course, to be holistic, um, there's the other side of the review process that's more personal, right? What do you do outside of the classroom? And we do have four short essay responses of, on, on the topics of service, resilience, um, and self-reflection, leadership, and long-term goals. Please note that these are very short essay responses, 120 words. So we're not looking, um, you don't have the time or, or, or the space to write a long, beautiful essay. Quick, straight to the point, historically, um, the best the, the essays that get the highest score are those that answer every single question within the prompt. Um, within the prompt, uh, there will be multiple questions. Do your best to answer all of them. And like I said, you have no room for fluffer. You don't need to let us know that it was a dark and stormy night and that you were so, so, so scared. Okay, great. But let's get to the meat of it. Let's start answering the questions that's within the prompt. Um, piss, uh, a, little, a little like a piece of advice for you all. Uh, do note that the base essay question on the common apps, like what is your wildest dream or how do you plan on, on achieving it? We do not read that essay. We only will read our four short essay responses. So if there's anything that you want us to know that may be left out of, let's say your SRAR or something that's more of a personal experience that you want us to know that you think would benefit from us knowing, um, either try to include it in your personal statements um, or there's a question right after the, the main base essay question on the Common App. The next question is an additional information box, text box. We do read that. So use that to your advantage. Um, and the best example that I can always give, let's say you're an athlete, you play soccer, sophomore year, you got a, a really bad concussion that you were homebound for the spring semester, and then all your grades were B minuses. You know, they're not bad grades, but it's definitely an anomaly, right, from any other year. Your self-report academic record won't let us know that you were homebound. So by you putting it in that text box in that additional information section, you allow us to be, um, um, uh, you allow us to practice a holistic review. So feel comfortable sharing, um, share with us whatever you feel comfortable sharing, um, but do know that that's the only thing that we do read, our four short essay responses and that additional information box. Since we don't take letters of recommendation and resumes, consider that activities and involvements piece on the application, like your resume, list everything and anything that you're a part of. The biggest thing that we're really looking for is just leadership in the things that you already do. So if you've been playing soccer for the past three years, don't just list it as that if you've been, in fact, the varsity team captain for the past two years, right? Don't just say you work 10 hours a week at Tropical Smoothie if you're the shift manager. Highlight yourself, sell yourself, and that'll help you get um, balanced out between uh, making you a competitive candidate for Virginia Tech on the personal side of the review process. Something else that we um that's offered to students is summer start. It is a six, a six week program. Um, uh, you earn about you earn six credits, so you you enroll in two classes, and this is the opportunity that allows students to move in early. Usually, you'll move in around the fourth of July, sometime around that um that week or so, and then you pretty much spend um you move in early already. You get to know the campus, you get to make friends way before everyone else moves in, and and you're already familiar with the environment. It's small classroom sizes. Um, and like I said, it's for anyone that's looking to, as the name says, summer start, a head start um, for their peers or anyone who may be uneasy or nervous about moving to Virginia Tech and you know starting that college experience. Summer start is definitely a great opportunity to, um, to explore. How do you sign up or register for summer start? Uh, you must indicate interest in your application on, on the Common App. It'll be within the Virginia Tech tab. 
by you saying you are interested does not, um, by no means are you automatically have to do it or enrolled. What that means is that you're pretty much joining that list of students. When the time comes, you'll start getting those emails saying, hey, we saw you were interested in Summer Start. The applications are open now or registrations open now. Limited capacity, sign up today. So that really, that's really all that question is for. So like I said, just a cool and unique opportunity for anyone that may be interested. <clears throat> Let's talk about our deadlines. Um, the, this has changed for this year, brand new. Um, in light of the Supreme Court ruling decision, we've made some adjustments um, to make sure that we are in line with the Supreme Court ruling. Um, and in doing so, we removed our early decision application type. So there is no longer any binding application to Virginia Tech. All we have is the early action, which is the November 15th deadline, um, or regular decision, which is January 15th. Please note that at this time, because it's the first year we're transitioning to having only two application types, we're still wait waiting to see what our volume of application looks like now that we have two pockets as opposed to three pockets of applications. So just check our website and please note that once we have a solidified date or time frame of when you'll not be notified, since you've already submitted your application, we'll have your email, you'll get an alert saying, hey, you know, we find we made a decision as to when our decisions will be released. So at this time, we do not know. Um, but like I said, just check our websites. So as a reminder, our applications are already open. They open August 1 of every single year. And you have until your respective deadline um, to go ahead and apply. Um, like I said, both of them are non-binding. There is no binding decision to either of these. Here is the updated cost to attend Virginia Tech. So these are the most up-to-date numbers um, for in-state versus out-of-state. Please note that tuition and fees are, um, and then room and board are the only two that we can necessarily bill you for. Um, so tuition and fees, of course, full-time student, 12 college credits or more. Room and board is the average cost of a dining plan and the average cost of living on campus. So those are things that we do bill you for. That additional costs are things that you should expect, but something that we don't bill you for, like books, supplies, personal transportation uh, me uh, methods. If you don't have a real winter jacket, maybe it's good to invest one, some snow boots, things like that nature your first year. But for in-state, you're looking about paying about 30, uh, 37,000 for one full year. Out of state, you're about you're you're almost at 59,000 for one full year. And this is of course, no scholarships, no financial aid, no FAFSA if we were to ask for a price up front, These are pretty hefty costs. So to bring them down, we have a pretty straightforward scholarship process known as a general scholarship application. This, um, this one application maximizes the number of the amount of aid that we can award you. This one application will take into account need, merit, departmental, and residency. Um, that application is due January 22nd along with the FAFSA. Um, for those that are familiar with FAFSA or are looking for it, FAFSA is opening later this year. Um, we do need both the FAFSA and the general scholarship application submitted by January 22nd. I think latest they said is that it's opening, the FAFSA will open sometime in mid to late December. So you only really have about a month to complete that in order to meet the general scholarship application. Like I said, you can still submit the FAFSA and the general scholarship application after the January 22nd deadline. But by meeting that deadline, you are maximizing the number of um, opportunities and aid that we can consider you for. So um, if that's something you're looking for, definitely make sure you take note of that deadline as that is a hard deadline for maximum consideration. So as I wrap up, why Virginia Tech? We have an 87% graduation rate when a national average is only 62%. So we're doing something right on our campus. We have over a, we have 90, a 91% ret um, retention rate from first to second year. So it just goes to show that our students are falling in love with Virginia Tech and make it their home for the next few years. Um, number nine, best career placement, right? So we're looking when we start talking about that return and investment, what does that look like? Um, is it worth my time, my money to send my student here or for you students to, to, to enroll and dedicate um, to your studies at Virginia Tech? Uh, top 20 best schools for internships, uh, top 20 for um, best schools making an impact. If we're looking um, at other aspects and other rankings at Virginia Tech, um, food is also uh, what we're, we're pretty best known for. Number one in the state of Virginia for best food on a college campus, number two in the entire country. So overall, like I said, Virginia Tech um, truly is a magical place offering a lot of opportunities for our students. 
Follow us on all platforms. We have plenty, of course, like, um, you know, we have X, Facebook, Instagram, um, Spotify, YouTube channel, Threads. But if you are into any of those things and want a more traditional method to get in touch with us, our phone number and email is at the bottom of the screen. So I'll leave this slide up while I think there's some things in the chat. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, yes. And then Dr. Lester, you went ahead and answered that question for me. But um, are there any questions from the chat? So for the SRIR, if the course name on your transfer is abbreviated or inducted, can you submit it just like that? Or for example, AP Computer Science, AAS Computer Science. Um, yeah, so uh, if you haven't done the SRIR, so the, um, the question, I'm answering the question in the chat, uh, there's a separate category that you'll list the level of rigor, right? So it'll have a drop down for AP, IB, dual enrollment, standard, or honors. You select that first. And then when it comes to putting in the actual title, um, if it's abbreviated on the transcript, please do your best to put it, the actual full name on the actual SIR. So putting computer science, um, and then also put, if it's A or B, for example, like if it's Calc 1, Calc 2, definitely list what level, which type of course you are. So you list everything. Any other questions? Pedro, I've had a couple students email me when they're trying to put in dual enrollment courses um, and they get asked about the, the, you know, the community college or where they're taking it. They've had some difficulty putting in, you know, both their high school and, and, get, and getting information. They tend to want course number and a lot of things, you know, who their counselor is, a lot of information that they don't necessarily have because they're not actually college students. Mm -hmm. um, for those... I will say just contact us on an individual basis for those because it depends. It depends. Um, I don't know if there's a way to bypass that. So I'd be interested in myself in knowing. So I will go ahead and drop my direct email in the chat. But if anyone wants to, um, Kim, if you have an example of a student, um, go ahead and send it my way if you have it just so I can look at it and let like Kayla know as well. I think okay. that's something that would be good for, good for her to know too. Will do. All right. Um, Question? Yes. So my situation is kind of like very specific because I lived in Liberia, West Africa for like six years between like fourth and like ninth grade. So I'm going to have to like submit like a separate transcript or whatever to apply to Virginia Tech. But when I lived in Liberia, I didn't have access to taking a higher level math. So what the only thing I could take like for that year was algebra one. And then um, once I moved to the States, I took geometry honors, but I wasn't like it's, it's a long story, which I'll like detail in my application, yeah. but junior year, I took pre-calc and this year I'm taking applied calculus just because like, that's where I am right now. Like that's, if I were to take AB, I don't think I would have been like best prepared for AB given I didn't take honors pre-calc. Is that like, do you think that would be fine? Like given my background situation, if I explain it well enough in my application? Um. So yeah, like I said, that additional information box is the best place to put it and letting us know what, what it went. And you said it was only ninth grade, it was only ninth grade, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So just like just saying that, you know, because of because you completed your first year of high school abroad, where you placed there, come and then when you came here, you weren't able to go higher. But like I said, the additional information box is a is the best put to, to let us know that information and we'll take it into account. And that's this is a perfect example of what it means for us to be holistic. Uh we can only practice being holistic unless you all let us in into what happened in that situation. But yeah. Um, I don't think it'll be too detrimental. Um, but like I said, uh, I guess we can also chat more offline. Um, because you said it was a quite a detailed story, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, yeah. It's... So yeah, let's let's connect out. Let's connect then offline. Thank um, you. Th yeah, no problem. Going through the chat, you also mentioned that you take a summer class in a virtual. Um, so I think you might be referring to Jumpstart. Our, our summer start uh, is not virtual. So you do move in physically to the residential hall that you will be living at as a first year student for the first year. And you take in-person classes and there's only two of them. I know you said official transcripts aren't required with the application, but should we can we go ahead and request official transcript the application if I wait? Um, I will be very transparent with that question regarding, do you still submit transcripts even though we don't require them? We will not look at them. They do not get taken into, they don't get reviewed. They don't, they, they don't, um, they do get added to your profile, but we still don't have access to view them when we're reading the actual, when we go into like the reader mode in the system. So we only have access to see the SRAR 
And um, they'll still have to submit a transcript though after you graduate high school. And that's the only time you'll send us an official transcript unless um, you studied abroad during the, um, your high school career. Um, and all we need that transcript pretty much is to say that you graduated, has all your final grades and classes, and then we're gonna match that up with your SRAR. So um, like I said, submitting the transcript won't necessarily benefit you, won't hurt you if you don't. Like I said, we just don't even look at it at all. Um, I mean, the Pathways Program, when is the time to submit the application? Um, so I think Dr. Lester, for anyone that's in Pathways or Fall Visitation, um, I don't want to confuse anyone who's not. So I'll go ahead and just, uh, Dr. Lester will get in touch and share out those dates for you all. I put it I put it later in the chat. Oh, perfect. <laughs> of course, uh, it was repeated in better grade to us. If a course was repeated and a better grade was attained, will the original grade still be considered? Um, will it be considered? Yes, because we have to consider every class and every grade that you list on there, but it benefits you to have taken it again. And then, of course, if the second time was your better grade, and hopefully it was, we'll, we know that you've mastered the class after that second time. So we'll take into account the, 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 the most recent grade as well. Uh, for dual enrollment classes uh, that are taught at the high school, but by a certified high school teacher, um, do you do you have to list the college that is associated with, even though you didn't physically take it at the college? Um, I think it's going to come down to how you list a dual enrollment course, because if you list the dual enrollment, like the college, uh, the community college as a separate school, you have to do all that information. But I think if you just do it through your high school, it might not. Um do you still have to list? So yeah, we don't, I don't think we ask you which college associated because like I mentioned earlier, there's that drop down into that tells you what level of, of, of rigor your course is and there's a dual enrollment option. Our additional costs with summer start. Uh, yes, there are, there will be some additional um, costs associated with summer start. Um, if you go, to, I, I'll, I'll try to find it before you log off, but I'll drop the link to their website um, on here. And just to confirm when the results be out, um, so yes, yeah, so for our decisions, so for early action and for regular decision, we do not have a date as to when they will be released. Um, we're still looking to see, this is the first year that we have two types of applications to, as opposed to three. So we are looking to see how much that volume is um, for our office to do. Once we know, you will receive a notification of when we, decision will be released. I would say give us at least until about mid-October to let, to publicize when, um, when will, will, when decision will be released. Um, understood, you do not need the official transcript. Do you need official SAT and ACT scores themselves um, or are they self-reported? If we send scores to taking, when we're taking tests, how can we confirm received if needed? Um, so yeah, so the self-report academic record, you will submit your high school information and test scores. So you'll self-report those. You won't have to send official test scores until um, after you've been accepted to Virginia Tech and like I said earlier, that's when you start working with the registrar's office to get those APs, IBs, all those core um, classes and credits transferred over. Um, you work with the registrar's office at that time. If SATs are, are, are slightly lower than suggested, would you recommend not reporting? Um, it's a personal decision, right? You you ultimately have the, the, the call at the end of the day. If, the, if it is within that 1180 to 13, um, 1180 to 1350 range, um, it's really gonna, and, and I hate saying this, but it's gonna come down to what major you're applying to, what your demographics are looking like, uh, like what area you're coming from. Um, but for the most part, yes, a low test score can hurt your application. If you are looking at going into an engineering or a math related major, of course, the SAT has two score, uh, two scores, right? The math score and the reading and writing score. We will prioritize and have larger emphasis on the math individual score. To be uh to give you an estimate range of where you might want to be from engineering, um, specifically for the SAT, somewhere around the 700s at the individual score, and also depends on which type of engineering you're going into. Um, but like I said, that that individual math score is what we're going to really be looking for over the reading and writing score. Um, and then I think the, they have a question about cost, so I put the script on the slide again. Um, that cost of tuition. Um, the fee, tuition and fees, which is about fifteen thousand or thirty six thousand, depending if you're in state or out of state. Room and board is about fifteen thousand. That is what we will bill you for. That additional six to seven thousand are just additional costs that we won't bill you for, but you should be expecting at least your first year of additional expenses. So it's an estimate cost of attendance, not an exact cost. Um. All right, and I see I have a hand. So long. 
Hi. Uh, Hi. I just wanted to talk about the first gen and stuff because I was been looking at scholarships for VTech and like the general definition of the school. Mm -hmm. Uh, was I have my college uh, get like counselor talk to me about what is defined as a first gen for VTech. I just want a confirmation from you. So basically, my mother and like father went to college in Vietnam, right? And my mother got associates and my dad got a bachelor's. But when we moved to the States, they didn't couldn't use their degrees and they don't know the American process that well. And for some schools that is considered first gen, but some schools it isn't. And I just want to see what Virginia Tech's standard on that, because when I did pathways, I was I looked at the requirement and it, one of the requirements stated that I was first gen from what my counselor did, but I'm not sure what VTech would consider that. Yeah, so um, the the like the blanketed statement is if either parent has completed a bachelor's degree or higher, um, at a four year institution or, or of course that institution. So that's the 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 generic one. Uh, with yours being abroad, I think it still classifies you as first gen because I think that only encompasses within the United States. Um, shoot me an email and I'll get you a confirmed answer when I, I can, I can bring that up to my senior staff or to our, like our processing team, how we classify as at least in your, in your special predicament. I would say, yes, we will still consider you as a first gen based on what you said. Um, but go ahead and send me an email and we can cut and I can confirm with you. All right. Thank you. And I just dropped it again in the chat. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All right, I think, and I'm, oh, this question, yes, Sophia. Hi, um, I have two questions. So I'm currently a teacher's assistant for my engineering teacher, mm -hmm. and I don't get a grade for this class, and it's not shown on my transcript. Should I still put it into the SRNR? Um, since you don't be getting a grade, a grade or any credit, if you don't get a grade or a credit, no, but I would include in your activities and involvements piece on that application. Um, okay, uh, good, and then... I I've also, so um, I'm part of Fairfax County Public Schools, and we have something called the World Language Exam, and this is if you're already proficient in a native language, you can get um, language credits for it. Mm -hmm. However, there isn't a place to report this language exam on the SRNR, so should I just admit it? Um, yeah, and like, and like, remember what I mentioned earlier as well, when I refer to test scores, mm -hmm. at least at the admissions review process, we will only look at a SAT and an ACT test score. Um, AP, okay. IB, now this one we won't consider. Now, unless uh, if you are a, a non-US citizen or permanent resident, and we will add, and if we're asking for a language um, uh, verification or something like that to prove your proficiency, then yes, we will probably need it, but they'll, it'll, it'll allow that option on the SRR if that applies to you. Okay, great. Yeah, because it shows up on my transcript and it looks like a class, but it's not. So it's fine if I admit it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, if you don't get a grade or, or or credit, then yeah, you can omit it. Well, I I get I get I got credits for taking this exam. Oh, the the, the exam no, class. So it's not a class; it's just an exam that I take, and then if I pass, it's a pass or fail exam. Then I get world language credits for it. Um, but yeah, there's no, go ahead. but there's no option on the SRNR for that specific exam. Yeah, so like I said, and then we'll work with it with the um we'll work with you after you've been accepted um because like I said we'll only be focused on the SAT and the ACT. Okay, great. So even if it's on my transcript, but I don't put it in SRNR and I get accepted, it won't like rescind my acceptance or anything. No, because you, because you, it's actually going to benefit you because you have more 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 things to offer as opposed to like you're missing anything, so you'll be fine. Oh, okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else? All right. Well, you do. I did drop my email um, in the chat, so feel free to save it. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. Or I know Dr. Lester is also um, a great partner in that as well. So either avenue, um, we'll get an answer for you. All right. Thank you all. Passing it back to you, Dr. Lester. Yeah. Just uh, again, thank you, Pedro, for uh, doing this on a Wednesday night. Um, I did record the session um, and I will uh, send everybody an email with that. Again, this is part of an ongoing series. Um, and next week, you actually get me again, and I will be doing a um, Ut Prozum essay writing workshop. Um, Pedro gave you some good advice that I am going to echo, answer every part of the prompt, 
Don't worry about the fluff. One of the things I always say is do not start with a Gandhi quote. Those are wasted words. Um, get right to the meat. That's what we're, we're looking for there. We are not looking for a beautiful English essay. So you'll get more information, um, but it is the same link each time. We keep it. It's What's Up Wednesdays. It's at 6 p.m. Um, the following week will be financial aid. Um, and then we got the other topics that we want to cover. We just haven't decided what order yet. If there is a topic that you really want information on or need to hear about it, um, everybody's got my email probably many, many times. Um, so thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And thank you, Pedro, for um, joining us tonight. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.